Welcome to the world united. Welcome to the world united. I call upon uh, Sharmila ji. I invite Sharmila Kanan ji, a holistic health coach uh, on vegan diet, a plant-based nutritionist, a yoga teacher, and has a divine connect at a very early age. The topic she is covering is practical karma theory, and it's important. Over to you, Sharmila ji. Thank you, Renuka ji and uh, Uganda doctor for giving me this opportunity and uh, let us begin so when we try to become spiritual in our lives it is extremely important for us to understand the karma theory what actually is happening is that as we are studying science as we are becoming modern and thinking that science has the answer to a lot of questions we realize that science does not actually have the answers to a whole lot of questions and people are uh, becoming doubtful and they don't know what is happening in their lives so much is going around us there is so much of violence so much of intolerance so much of hatred dislike for each other that we really have to understand the reasons behind it and as we try to get into spirituality the karmic theory the theory of karma reincarnation however we are going to cover only the karma theory here has the answers to all this how and why does it happen what is its importance thing is when we understand the karmic theory we will start thinking before we think we will start thinking before we speak and then before we do anything before we take any action again we will think this is the benefit of the karma theory there is absolutely no need to be afraid of it frightened or think that this is something fatalistic every living organism beginning the blade of grass comes fitted with a natural gps a global positioning system what we have devised is a very latest apparatus what nature has devised is totally undelible except through meditation and through the blessings of a guru or very deep connect with the divine that is when we are we let go or we burn off our karma and it starts recording every thought every word and every action how does it happen every living organism beginning with a blade of grass has a soul within it and when it is a blade of grass there is absolutely no recording going on because the blade of grass doesn't think doesn't speak any words in terms of action and doesn't do anything so there is nothing happening there but once the soul from the blade of grass moves on through transmigration to let's say even a mosquito the gps becomes active it starts recording then it moves to other organisms and then it let's say it comes over to the human form now what happens at the human form it functions at a very very complex and a very advanced level there are three types of karmas the ones which are we are currently enduring which we are calling as prarabdha karma the ones which are recorded and have not yet been downloaded upon us which is called the sanchit karma and then there is the kriyaman karma that we are currently doing let's say as, let's begin with the human body what is happening we are thinking constantly we are having around 80000 thoughts in a day and out of which the vast majority let's say 50 to 60000 are negative thoughts negative for oneself negative towards others and negative towards let's say the society in general let's say that i am thinking that the person in front of me is a fool now it is just a thought i haven't said it to anybody but the moment i think it is recorded i see the person and in my anger i feel like expressing it i say that you're a fool and i use much stronger words also to express my anger or because of my own arrogance or because of a bad day that i've had 
that is again recorded now if i just catch the collar of the other person and give him a tight slap it is again recorded so even if nobody is looking at me i am performing some karmas in the room where there is no one else so it's a thought based karma or only one person who is being subjected to my anger is looking at me and there is no one else it is still recorded now how does it function at an advanced level let's say there is a butcher and the butcher kills about let's say 100 goats in a day or even in a lifetime now that karma has to go into the sanchit karma that is the something which has been done which is recorded but not yet downloaded why because the killing of those 100 goats can be avenged or can be you know brought at par only when the butcher dies 100 times killed by the goats but it can't happen in the entire lifetime of the butcher because he will die only once so that is recorded and given to the butcher slowly in various janmas that is how by dying 100 times he repays for something that he did in one janm so imagine the karmic debt that we are all carrying in mahabharata there is a very good story where dhritarashtra asks lord krishna he says that i haven't done in not anything in the last 108 words that because he was having the capacity to look back at his previous 108 janmas and he says that i haven't done anything in 108 100 janmas to have 100 of my sons killed so krishna places a hand on his head and takes him back let's say more than 108 janmas or even before or whatever and tells him and shows him that you have done this thing in this particular janma so in this birth let's say after 100 janmas 100 of his sons are going to die so imagine the complexity the way the sukshma nadis in our body now science is discovering that cells are carrying millions of years of memory mitochondria carries memory we in ancient hinduism are saints are rishis they were all scientists they were all deeply meditating souls they were all mathematicians astrologers they were able to see these things and they called it the karmic theory when we know about it then we will be careful before we think of harsh things for that's why we say that have positive thoughts have positive thoughts you never know when that thoughts are going to come true because it is up to nature to decide when to give it back to you what portion to store what portion to release in that particular birth also so a portion of it is released which is called the prarabdha so it contains both your good and bad karmas accordingly you have suffering or happiness in life when we understand it we will never be harsh towards not only other human beings but even every other living organism if you pluck a grass it does not carry such a heavy load if you kill a mosquito the load is still not heavier but when you kill a four legged animal or a bird it tends to become heavier when you hunt it is very directly loaded on you that particular animal that you have hunted will come back to you which is which actually goes if you think deeply if we all think deeply this goes on to explain the reason of unnecessary uncalled for violence in the world somebody looks at me somebody feels that i should not be living somebody has so much of hatred for me even though i may not have met that person why is it happening like that the only actual explanation is the theory of karma let us just think about it there are children who are born in very wealthy continents wealthy countries wealthy families and very loving parents there are those who are born very intelligent then there are those who are born even let's say deformed they have so many illnesses so there is so much of misery in the family because of their birth the doctors are being paid then the child grows up he is still not useful for the family he is still not useful for himself also the only logical explanation is an understanding of the theory of karma once we understand this we are able to devise methods in which we can sort of self control our own thoughts 
our own words, our own actions. Now, this continuous killing of animals, the animal agriculture, is adding to a lot of karma and so much of debt that it cannot be easily cancelled off or even down, which explains the reason for the violence in the world and which is also the reason why I even left dairy products and became a vegan. Why? Because there is so much of cruelty in that industry. If I'm partaking of that, then I approve of that kind of behavior towards the animals to satisfy my own palate, let's say for a brief few minutes. When we become spiritual, or we try to follow the spiritual path, we have to understand all this, and accordingly, we awaken, we become more evolved. That is the importance of the theory of karma. I end it here. Thank you so much.